Today is the third day of the competition. We only have a few matches. If we win these matches, we will be in the high ranking. Somebody told me that we are a magnificent rookie team. Because some of them, there are some teams that are really five years, but as if they are just a beginner. And we, we have a good robot. The function of the robot, it's not too fast, but the function of hardling, it's really good. And also we are the smallest team, and we are good too. We may lose it or we will win it, but I hope it's more on winning. You're probably your toughest matches are ahead of you. You got a team that's in sixth place that you're up against, and a team that's in eleventh place yeah. that's in front of you. It's day three, the final day of competition. The rookie Robodubs start the day with a much needed win. Their final qualifying match is critical to making the playoff round. You'll do okay. With their robot down in their last game, the Robodoves no longer have a chance of advancing into the playoffs. Their season is over. But as the day ends, there is a surprise. Congratulations to the recipient of this judge's award, Team 2528, the Robodoves. The RoboDoves win an award for their exceptional rookie performance. I want to be an engineer. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought you wanted to be a, a lawyer. No, no more? <laughs> the Ratchet Rockers finished the repairs on their robot's arm just in time. They have to score big in order to make it into the playoffs. This is the last game, and time is running out. Go, go. Finally, they manage to score crucial points by knocking the ball off the overpass. Too little, too late. The Winchfield team loses the game, and they don't advance to the playoffs. It was fantastic, and we knocked like a thousand balls. Okay, no, not really, but like three off of them, and like it was very, very exciting. I won in my heart. This whole experience has really changed my life. Like, I am actually seriously considering going into engineering, and I would have thought that was the total geek thing to do and all this other stuff. It's totally the geek thing to do, but in fun, I actually think it'd be extremely fun. The Rambotics begin their final qualifying matches. To make the playoffs, they need two more wins and no more problems from their robot. All right, I guess we're going. Yep. Their robot's damaged arm and other gremlins get in the way. We're just having some troubles with actually getting enough power to knock the ball off with our, uh, with our brush. That's what we're tweaking on right now. The robot has to be consistent, and we're not consistent right now. So everybody knows that. Everybody's watching us, too. In the end, 
they don't make it. For the first time since we've been competing in first robotics, we are going to be sitting down and being spectators. We're not going to be in the championship. But the positive attitude of the Ridgeview team has made a strong impression on their fellow competitors. You guys just got the, the Spirit Award that was nominated by your peers. Thank you, Angela! Thank you, Mark. I mean, it was a great experience. It makes me want to come back next year and be a mentor for Ridgeview for the, for the kids next year to you know, help them out where we messed up. For the Miss Daisy team, the season isn't over yet. They keep winning and find themselves ranked second going into the playoffs. We've never been undefeated, and I think we've always had at least two losses, so this is our best. Um, you know, number two at the regional, you can't, you can't argue with number two. As one of the top teams, Miss Daisy must choose two other robots to be part of its alliance. The three teams will be together for the entire playoffs. Only a strong alliance can hope to reach the finals. Uh, we've had kids come into the into the program. You know, somebody will come in and they're just kind of like, "Oh, well, let's drill a bunch of holes and I'm out of here," and they start to realize that they need to know things to be able to achieve their goal. And um, next thing you know, they're taking all you know, college-level courses and they're, they're getting interested in engineering. Every match is now critical. Lose, and your season is over. This is where it gets worse. Miss Daisy's alliance battles hard for a win in the first round. They keep charging ahead during the semifinals. And soon, the Miss Daisy alliance finds itself in the championships. But now, they're up against the toughest robots they've ever faced. An alliance of shooters. Robots that shoot the ball over the target and rack up points quickly. Well, I'm seeing these two spectacular machines that have just plastered every team all the way through. And I'm looking out there and I'm saying, wow, I guess this is it. Make some noise for Team 272! The Cider Crusaders from Lansdale! It's a best out of three round. The first alliance to win two matches will be the competition champion. In the opening match, it becomes clear Miss Daisy can't stand up to the relentless attack of the shooters. They are too slow and fall further and further behind. Miss Daisy's alliance gets crushed. They just plastered every team all the way through, and they just plastered us. There's no way that we're gonna we're gonna win this thing. Match two. The Miss Daisy Alliance does not give up. They begin to figure out how to foil the shooter's game. Keep the balls away from them. They pick up their own scoring, and it comes down to the final seconds. Miss Daisy wins by only two points. Now it's down to a single elimination match. It's the final match. The championship is on the line. And once again it's close. Neither alliance can pull ahead. down by six points and with time running out Miss Daisy attempts one final maneuver <laughs> the 
they've won. But there are penalties. It appears both alliances interfered with each other in the heat of the battle. But Miss Daisy also racked up additional points as time ran out. All right, there was one penalty on each alliance. Who wants to score? The blue alliance! It's an amazing finish. You saw all the problems we had. We've had horrible problems, but we never took our eye off the ball. We, we kept sticking to the plan, and I think that's the most valuable thing they come away with. If you believe in yourself and you stick to the plan, then things will work out. We walked away and thought to ourselves, this is probably the most powerful thing we had ever seen as a group of teachers. You have the power to change somebody's mind by mentoring these kids through this period where they are looking for things to get interested in. One of the things about school is, you know, you can learn the math, you can learn how to figure out problems, but until you actually get a chance to use that knowledge, it's just words or numbers on a piece of paper. And I think the activity itself is so unique. For, for kids at this age to be able to, to do this, it transforms them. It, it gets people interested in, in science and engineering. What we do here is not magic, but it's magical. And that was magic. Learn more at gearingupproject.org. Gearing Up is available on DVD. To order a copy, please call 1-800-729-9966 or visit www.ketc.org slash store. This program was made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.